Thank you all very much for your interest. And let me say a few words, and I'll take your questions later. As I told the council, perhaps I'm the first water minister addressing the August body on hydroelectric dam that is under scrutiny in the unprecedented and unfair manner here at Security Council. It, we believe, Ethiopia believes, it is an unfitting use of the time and the resources of the UN Security Council to discuss the Grand Ethiopia Renaissance Dam. Uh, nevertheless, I have uh, voiced the concerns and the just causes of my country, Ethiopia. Let me reiterate that we are dealing here with a hydroelectric dam. We are not building a nuclear plant, which is not the first of its kind in Africa or in the world. The world has many experience on hydroelectric dam. Uh, we are building a reservoir to store water that will generate electricity. After heating the turbine, the water continues to flow in the downstream. Uh, GERD is actually a people's project. All works of Ethiopians uh, are contributing to build this dam to bring light home to 65 million people who are currently living in darkness. The Nile belongs to all peoples of uh, the basin countries. Uh, in the basin, we have half a billion in 11 riparian countries. Ethiopia generates 77 billion cubic meter water annually. And uh, in fact, 85% of the Nile um, is coming from Ethiopia. Equally, Ethiopians have best wishes and neighborly care for their compatriots in Egypt and Sudan. We have all the intention to live together in peace and cooperate for our mutual benefit. The GERD demonstrates these core principles for collective well-being, prosperity, and regional integration. Ethiopia has 70% of its population uh, under the age of 30. More than 100,000 people are uh, graduate from higher education, and 30 million Ethiopians are in school. It is an imperative, therefore, to cater the growing need for this population. Finally, Ethiopia believes that an agreement is with the rich and given the necessary political will and the commitment to negotiating good faith. We have already reached an understanding on a considerable number of issues. So the African Union is the right platform, the right platform to deal with this kind of issue, to really bring uh, a conducive environment for faithful negotiation. Thank you very much. I can now request, ask, uh, you can ask me your questions. Yes. Over yeah. here. Thank, thank you, Mr. Minister. Uh, Ray Bouchafra from Sky News Arabia. Uh, in today's uh, uh, session, most of uh, members of Security Council, they talked about a solution that comes to satisfy all the parties of the conflict, Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt. What, which kind of solution do you think, in your point of view, will come to satisfy all of the parties? Thank you. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, it's actually a solution that satisfies the three, the three countries, uh, you know, the negotiating parties, uh, solution is uh, solutions that works for all of us is very important. So we are working towards that. Uh, it's uh, to look into rules and guidelines uh, that could be concluded that uh, works well for everyone in a win-win cooperative that uh, is based on equitable and reasonable utilization without causing significant harm principles. Egypt and Sudan, they are accusing Ethiopia that you don't want any kind of solution and you just go into unilateral uh, steps without consulting the other uh, parties, think. <laughs> no, it's the other way around, actually. We always go to negotiation with solution at hand. We take a draft um, uh, rules and guidelines agreement to uh, put it on the table and these parties uh, always disrupt. In fact, is during the last nine meetings, uh, they disrupted. Ethiopia have, has never disrupted any, any meeting. Wanted always to continuously engage and solve. And we have seen already solution at hand for first feeling since about one year. But uh, the parties didn't want to conclude that uh, first feeling agreement. 
uh, it would give us more time actually to negotiate the more complex uh, issues of comprehensive agreement. Mr. Minister, uh, as you have said in different statements uh, of Ethiopian officials that this is a matter of sovereignty and that you also have uh, more plans for more dams on the, on the river in the future. Are you still considering this matter uh, as, as a sovereignty matter to Ethiopia and nothing else? Mm -hmm. And what about the future plans on other dams? Well, Ethiopia has future needs, current needs and future needs. Currently, uh, as you know, 65 million people are without electricity. But uh, uh, <laughs> if you go further downstream, 100% access to electricity. Hydropower is one of the solutions. If you take uh, drinking water, uh, about 25 million people are without access to clean water in Ethiopia. We have to drink water. We have to treat and uh, then provide solution for our people. So that is uh, what it implies. We have to establish secured food production. We cannot continue to migrate everywhere in the world. Uh, we have to really produce adequate food, uh, supply adequate water, supply uh, electricity and create jobs as I indicated, you know, 70% uh, of 150 million are uh, under 30 years. These people should have a future. We have to establish that future. Yes. Mr. Minister, James Bayes from Al Jazeera. You said in the Council that you felt that an agreement at the AU was something that you could reach. Why then at the moment do you not suspend the filling of the dam as a gesture of goodwill to get those negotiations going again? Thank you for raising that question. I know currently all dams in the Nile Basin are filling. The reason being it's a rainy season, July, August and September, you know, bountiful water. In fact, it is uh, creating problems by uh, creating havoc in, in the form of flood. It's a real opportunity, actually. GERD provides that opportunity of protecting uh, against flood. Uh, there is no really uh, an issue. Uh, second, when you see it from Ethiopian context, we contribute 77 billion cubic meter to the Nile. It's only fair to take 13.5 to fill our dam. We are, we are not uh, building African uh, white elephant uh, not to fill the dam, but actually fill and operate and utilize it. So. Uh, it's really logical uh, on issues that matter actually about the operation of the dam in future. We have to come to conclusion uh, how do we handle if drought occurs. It, uh, stretching its sand, it will utilize some of its reserve storage actually to uh, help downstream countries so that they will not be uh, harmed by extreme droughts. As long as water is in the reservoir of above certain quantity, uh, we cooperate. That is the way to go, actually. It's not not uh, prevent Ethiopia's uh, investment from meager uh, resources we have at hand, uh, contribution of uh, all poor people in Ethiopia working around the dam uh, to realize the opportunity. So it doesn't harm anybody, believe me. It's also the right of Ethiopia because uh, we contribute 77, taking 13.5 is not uh, a real issue. It is well within uh, the limit of Ethiopia's uh, equitable share. Uh, Mr. Minister, uh, the ambassadors of Russia and France, they expressed, you know, uh, uh, their view uh, that their countries, they can help to facilitate the um, discussion between say, the three parts. Yeah, Russia and France in the Security Council, they expressed that their countries, they are willing uh, to help to close the gap between the three parts. What's your comment? On, uh... We don't have problem. Anybody can come with solution and advise uh, any country, uh, individually or uh, collectively. We don't have the, with this kind of uh, support coming from uh, uh, you know part, our partners. Uh, but we are negotiating in actual negotiation. We are. Uh, handling the issue in a rule-based, according to the Declaration of Principle, in a faithful manner, uh, in an aggressive way. So we are, we are moving forward. You know, the world has a lot of experience. 
who are not building the first dam in the world. You know, Europe has uh, you know thousands of dams. Uh, U.S. Uh, Africa has uh, very good uh, experience uh, and best practices in managing river basins like uh, Niger, Limpopo, uh, Zambezi, Senegal. Uh, we can draw experience from those rivers and uh, live in peaceful uh, manner uh, so that we can develop uh, rule-based uh, policy. Abdullah Imasi from Al Hurra. My question is What are Ethiopia's options if Egypt and uh, Sudan insist on making the, the issue before the upcoming Security Council sessions? Uh, what, say it again, please. Can you repeat? What are, the, uh, what are Ethiopia's options if Egypt insist and the Sudan insist on making the issue in front of the Security Council? The next, Security uh, Council sessions. is not a place uh, for this kind of negotiation. As I explained, it's the first case, the uh, water resource development case. Water resource development case or development case is not the issue of the Council. The Council is looking into issues of uh, security and political issues. Here, we have a development project. Uh, most of the Council members actually uh, emphasize that we go back to African Union led negotiation, uh, conclude uh, result uh, on faithful negotiation. Are you still willing to work, uh, are, are you still willing to collaborate with the African Union? Absolutely, we are working on that. We have never boycotted the African Union meeting. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that, thank you. Tara Shehata says the subject of sexual harassment is one of the most important in Egypt because it's too often downplayed. When it's just like a word, um, no one really talks about it. They kind of say, um, you know, it wasn't a big deal, just forget about it. But these little things add up and then they, they matter and they affect a woman's life and those who are harassed's life. Um, so I, I really think um, we should enforce laws.